my name is Tiffany Barber and I'm a figurative oil painter. I studied painting for four years at Edinburgh College of Art and I spent a brief time of that doing an exchange at the Hungarian University of Fine Arts. And when I spent time there and in Edinburgh, I was sort of surrounded by beautiful architecture that's like Baroque and Renaissance and it's inspired sort of my paintings up until today and will forever continue to do that. So since the day that I could hold a paintbrush, hold a pencil, I've known that I want to be an artist and forever I've been striving to be that artist. Um, and now that I've got the studio and it's sort of become a reality for me, it feels incredible that I can spend like my days painting and I know it's something that I was kind of destined to do. I sort of never swayed from the idea so I've pushed through with like the sort of dream of becoming an artist and being able to like make my entire life about art. I think it's possibly because as an artist I feel like I don't have the loudest voice and I'm not the best at putting sort of like my thoughts and opinions out there in conversations with people so I think that's the way I use art is to sort of translate and like express the way I feel about certain things. Um, yeah, so I've I spent a lot of my childhood just painting, drawing, sort of in my own little world, and then that's exactly what I do here. My paintings take so long, so they can take up to a month per painting, just under, just more. So I kind of get lost in my little art world and art bubble here. Um, yeah, and I was actually brought up not in a very creative environment, so my I'm not from like a creative family background. So it's been quite interesting being the one who's sort of like popped out of nowhere and like wanted to pursue this sort of artistic career, which is sort of a notoriously not the easiest thing to do. Um, but I know that, yeah, I'm so passionate about my work and what I want to do. So I sort of like keep pushing on with it. And I was brought up as an athlete. So I think because of the sort of style that I paint in, I think that sort of translated through the discipline sort of nature of my upbringing and being an athlete and being a competitive swimmer, training nine times a week, competitions at the weekend. So I've always kind of, it's like I've been sort of tailored with this determination and drive to sort of succeed in what I want to do. And I think I can really appreciate having those qualities from being an athlete and being able to sort of translate that into my sort of creative world as well. So the inspiration that goes behind my paintings comes from uh, sort of like a lot of stories that you hear from like Greek mythology. So I find that world absolutely fascinating and I just want to know all the stories, um, all the tales. I find that Greek mythology with the goddesses and like the Greek, the gods, they just, they feel so human to me as well. Like when you hear sort of like their stories and their tales, it seems like there's always some sort of moral to the story that we can then learn and like use in our everyday lives. And I think what I have done a lot with my painting, especially in my series before, which is called Renaissance Resurrected, was I was sort of combining like modern objects with these old Renaissance sculptures that were mostly focused on sort of Greek mythological tales to sort of tell a new story about what's happening in life today. So a lot of them can focus on sort of like social, political, economical issues that we are faced with nowadays. And it sort of feels easier to sort of express how I'm feeling about something by complaint, like sort of bringing these sculptures back to life and making it a lot more relatable to people nowadays. So yeah, and I think it's really, really important with my art to not say like, this painting is definitely about this and that painting's definitely about that because everyone experiences life completely differently from each other. 
So I think when people sort of see my work, I, I'd rather hear from them what they think about it rather than me telling them what it's about. Because yeah, art is for everybody, so you shouldn't have to sort of shut someone's ideas down about how they've sort of looked at it and perceived it. It's yeah, it's amazing to be able to like open up your mind to what other people can see in something and what they get from it. Because if we were, yeah, if we didn't sort of talk about these things or like listen to each other, then um, we'd just all be the same and life would be so boring. <laughs> So I think it's, yeah, it's really important to be able to sort of have these discussions with each other and not sort of shoot at each other's like ideas down and say, this is not about that because it can be about anything. It's like a completely unique experience um, art and it's, yeah, everyone takes it in their different way because everyone's had different lives as well. Um, so with my series where I was sort of combining these modern objects, bringing them back to life and sort of provoking people to sort of ask questions to each other and sort of get talking about, yeah, about what they think that can relate to like our lives nowadays. Um, I've started on sort of a new series, which has now sort of combined some of the sort of methods that August Rodan uses. And um, so he it has, yeah, one of my favorite artworks is by him. It's called The Gates of Hell. And the way he sort of sculpted, he would sculpt individual like sculptures and then build it up together to be this one incredible artwork. So I sort of moved on to sort of using his sort of sculptural processes and taking that into like my own sort of painting. So I'm sort of choosing bits of different sculptures and like combining them together to create sort of this this new sort of chaotic sculpture. And I've kept it in sort of the style that I work with, where I have like the sculptures floating in the abyss to sort of create this sort of eerie sense of mystery. And it's sort of what that does as well, I think to my, to my paintings, it sort of removes them from anything else. And again, that sort of relates back to the experiences that people will have with them. So there's nothing in the background to sort of influence anything else that they're getting from the imagery apart from the colours of the backgrounds. Um, but yeah, I think it sort of has this sort of isolated feeling about it. And I do want to sort of always keep my artwork as a bit more ambiguous because I want to hear what people think about it and what they get from it. And that's what art is for, basically. So I like to keep my paint and style quite traditional. So I work with oil paints and I build my own canvases and stretch my own canvases myself. So everything that you can see is sort of started from, from scratch. And it feels much more like, like you're in touch with what you're doing when you know that you've completely started it. Like you've made this thing from absolutely nothing. Um, and my style of painting as well, I. I want to paint in this sort of traditional style. My subject matter is traditional. And I think it's really important to keep these sort of traditional methods of painting going um, because you can see sort of, yeah, art in the future, you don't know what's gonna happen. It could be, it could be dying. So I think it's important to sort of keep the traditions alive of creating artworks from, from oil paintings and traditional. I've been in Brighton for about two years now and I absolutely love the sort of artistic community that's here. It's such a creative place to live and it just feels like it's in its own little bubble away from the rest of the world sometimes. You get so many creative people who live here from artists to actors to musicians. Um, it's just like a whole big combination of creative people. And it's nice because you can sort of bounce off of each other and inspire each other as well. But I think being in Brighton as well sort of allows more space to be creative because you're right on the, yeah, you're right on the coast. Sometimes I can usually just walk down to the sea in five minutes from here if I'm 
particularly struggling with painting. Sometimes it can be a bit of a roller coaster. Sometimes I'll be in love with the painting and the next the next hour I'll absolutely hate it and be wanting to cry and have a meltdown. But it's those kind of times that I can take myself out of here and I'll be I'll go to the seafront and I'll just sit on the beach for a bit, listen to some music and come back and then it's like it's like I'm a whole different artist again. <laughs> um, but I think with yeah with Brent, I have had the experience and the opportunity of having like exhibitions in London. So last year I had my first solo show, which was in London, and that's followed with another two solo shows, one in Swindon and one in Glasgow. And so that it was incredible. So it's been nice being able to sort of travel with my artwork and experience the sort of different sort of crowds of people that will come and enjoy my art there. And I used to have a studio as well in Hackney for a bit. And I did find it quite hard to be creative and artistic in London, feeling like my sort of like creativity was a little bit crowded and like by just having to go on the tube every day. It's not my normal sort of scene to sort of start like getting inspired and things. So I think that's why I love being in Brighton. I think you've got like the headspace to be able to sort of gather your thoughts and come up with like new ideas. It's amazing to have an opportunity like this where I can sort of sit here in my studio and talk about my work and I just, yeah, this feels, yeah, a bit surreal knowing that I'm here and I'm doing this painting and then people would like to come and like to ask me questions about it. It's always quite um, intimidating. I think most artists are known for being, you know, hidden away. Um, which is definitely what I do most of the time. So it is, it's a really great opportunity. It's just, yeah, thanks to all like the other creators for being able to like integrate with each other and be able to create more opportunities for each other. Because I think in today's, like, yeah, today's time, like the way things are going, it's quite hard for creatives to sort of keep pursuing their passions um, without having to, you know, have four different jobs going on, which sometimes, you know, I have to pick up the occasional random job to be able to support my passion, but it's something that I'm like so determined to do so that I can keep on creating and it's, yeah, it's great. <laughs>